Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to deploy a Spring Boot application with a DynamoDB endpoint into a EC2 instance. First, let us create a EC2 instance. Go to your AWS console, click on EC2. Click on Launch Instance and I'm going to select a free tier 1. Click on Select. Uh, let it be T2 Micro. Click on Configure, Add Storage, Add Tax. I'm going to give a name. Click on Configure Security Group and select an existing security group, which is your default VPC security group. Click on Review Launch, Launch. If you don't have a key, create a new key pair. If you already have an existing key, select that key and acknowledge the terms and conditions. Click on Launch Instances. The instance is now getting launched. Let us go back to our AWS console and create a DynamoDB table. Scroll down in the database category, click on DynamoDB and click on create table. Give a table name and give a partition key or a hash key value. I'm going to also add a sort key, which is going to be my last name field and click on create. The table has been created. Now let us go back to our EC2 console. The instance is getting initialized. In the meantime, scroll down on the left panel and you will see something called security group. Security group is nothing but it acts as a firewall for your application. We have added the default security group, but let's create a new security group and add our own rules in it. I'm going to name the security group as EC2 DynamoDB security group. And I'm going to create an inbound rule for SSH to remotely con connect to my EC2 instance. Uh, the source can be anywhere or my IP. If you give anywhere, this EC2 instance will be accessible by anyone who has the private key. I'm going to select anywhere for now. And then let's add another rule. I'm going to do a HTTP. HTTPS and then click on create. The security group has been created. Now let's associate the security group to our EC2 instance. Go back to your EC2 dashboard. Click on the instance. Click on actions. Go to networking and click on change security group. Add the new security group created to your EC2 instance. Our basic configurations are done. Now let us try to connect to our EC2 instance from our machine. Click on connect and it will give you the steps how to connect to your remote instance. First, you need to change the permission on your private key file that you got downloaded when you launched the instance. Copy this command and go to your command prompt. Paste this command and run this command. This will change the permissions on the ec 2 keypairperm file. Now, it has already auto generated the SSH command for us. So let's copy this command, paste it into the command prompt, and you should be able to successfully log in to your EC2 instance. I have already created a Spring Boot DynamoDB application, and if you're looking for this example, please take a look at one of my videos where I have explained how to use a DynamoDB with Spring Boot application. I'm going to use the same example here for this deployment example. So once your application is ready, try to build this application and go to your target folder. You will have the jar generated here. This is the jar that we are going to export to the EC2 instance. You can export this jar by 
different methods. One is using WinSFP, connect to your EC2 instance and you can move the file to your EC2 instance. The second way is to use the SCP command to export your file to the EC2 instance. The third way is to move this jar file to S3 and then downloading the jar into your EC2 instance from S3. The fourth way is to use continuous integration through Jenkins to deploy a build to EC2 instance. So I'm going to use SCP command to push this file to my EC2 instance. Before you run the SCP command, make sure that you are in the folder where your jar is present. It would make life very easy. So the command is scp-i. You need to give your EC2 private key file and then your jar. Now you should give the EC2 details. These details can be obtained here. Copy this. Paste it here. Give a colon and mention the path where you want this file to be exported to. And click on enter. The file is now getting exported to the EC2 instance. The file has been successfully uploaded to the EC2 instance. Now let us take a look at our EC2 instance. The file has been successfully uploaded to our EC2 instance. Before we run this file, we need to make sure that all our updates are up to date. So let us quickly run the sudo yum update and why. The update is successfully done. Let us quickly take a look at our Java version. We don't have Java installed. Now let us go ahead and install Java. Java has been successfully installed. Now let us try to run this jar. All right, our Tomcat has started on port 9001. Let us go back to our console. I just want to mention one thing. In our security group, we mentioned HTTP protocol on AT. SSH and HTTPS, but we never mentioned about opening the port for 9001. So let us open the port now for 9001. Add a custom rule here and select anywhere. Click on save. The changes will be immediately reflected and you don't have to restart your EC2 instance for this. Let us quickly get the public DNS here. Go to a new browser and click on enter. We have got the white label error page. That means our application is now up and running. Now let us go to Postman and let us try to insert a record and let us try to fetch a record in order to confirm that our EC2 instance application is communicating with DynamoDB properly. Let us try to now insert a record into our DynamoDB database. So I have the public DNS URI of my EC2 instance and the request mapping along with the request body. Let me click on send. Successfully inserted into DynamoDB table. So let's quickly take a look at our DynamoDB now. Cool, looks like our request got successfully inserted. Now let's do a get on our API. I need the student ID. And the last name. The last name is Anthony. We have got the response back with the details that we inserted in the previous post request. So it looks like our application that is deployed in the EC2 instance is now communicating with the DynamoDB without any issues. So how does this communication between the EC2 instance and DynamoDB happen? 
By default, communications to and from DynamoDB uses the HTTPS protocol. That is, request from the EC2 instance will go into the public internet and then will access the DynamoDB endpoint over the HTTP. Well, many customers will have privacy and security concerns about sending and receiving data across the public internet. This is where a VPC endpoint for DynamoDB comes into picture. A VPC endpoint for DynamoDB enables Amazon EC2 instances in your VPC to use their private IP address to access DynamoDB with no exposure to the public internet. The traffic between your VPC and the AWS service does not leave the Amazon network. Pretty cool, right? Let us take a look at how to configure this in our next video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more such videos.